Let's face it, as technology and medical advances happen, people are living longer. So what does that mean for you and for federal employees? And what does that mean to how the rules are going to change over time, potentially here in the new future, near future, on when federal employees can retire. We're going to talk about that today and the things that you should keep in mind as you're planning for retirement. Because just like anything with the government, whether it's taxes or even inflation, all these things, there's so many things in life we can't control. So today we're going to talk about some of the things we potentially can't control, but you should definitely be planning for when you are planning for retirement. So what the heck am I talking about when I say, hey, federal employee retirement ages are going up. What the heck am I talking about? So there's a couple factors here. As you know, as I've said a million times here, you have three main sources as a federal employee. You have your pension, you have your social security, and your TSP. Those are the three main sources of income you have in retirement. Now, you may have others. You may have a military retirement. You may have rental properties. You may have other income, but the vast majority of federal employees have those three and the pension, I, I'm kind of including the first supplement in there as well. If you have any questions on any of those three, three income sources, how to get the most out of them, I've got a million videos on each one, so definitely check those out. So let's break it down. We know that for your pension as a federal employee, a normal federal employee has what they call a minimum retirement age, which for most of you, it's going to be between 56 and 57. And there's lots of rules I'm not going to dive into, but basically many federal employees have to reach their minimum retirement age before they can quote unquote retire. Now that is for your pension. Now let's talk about social security. So there's all often confusion between what they call your minimum retirement age and your full retirement age. Okay. They sound similar, very different. Your minimum retirement age or your MRA is for your pension or your, for your federal retirement, your full retirement age, your FRA is for social security. And your FRA, for most of you, is going to be between 66 and 67, right in there. So again, MRA is 56, 57 for most of you. Your FRA, your full retirement age for Social Security, is between 66 and 67. Now, why the heck do I bring this up? Well, as many of you know, Social Security is, they, they project out, they say, hey, look, in mid-2030s, 20, mid we're not going to have enough in the Social Security Trust Fund to cover 100% of benefits. Now, they can still cover most benefits for a long, long time. So you don't have to worry about it going completely broke because that's not, no one's ever said it's going completely broke. They just won't be able to cover 100% if nothing changes. So there's been proposals, many proposals on updates. Okay, what changes can we make so that the system is sustainable so that we can continue paying 100% of benefits over time? And one element that is almost continuously in these proposals is what if we just raise the full retirement age, right? So again, like I said, for most of you, that's 66, 67. So potentially, if some of these things actually go through, which right now there's none that are actually close to going through um, because there's just so much, so many opinions and emotions on this topic. Nothing has happened yet. But the reason I'm bringing this up for you guys is because it's a reminder for all of us that retirement planning is so crucial and so important, but you have to remember plans change and the rules change. So you have to have enough wiggle room and margin in your plan so that when things change, like potentially your full retirement age for social security, you're okay. You can still retire. You can still do the things you want. You're going to be fine. But if you retire and you are just barely hanging on, meaning you're the amount of income in retirement is just barely enough where you're like, oh, this is tight. Well, that's not a comfortable place to be when changes like changes happen, like rising tax rate, tax rates or a higher forward time age for social security. When these small changes happen, if you have no margin in your plan, no wiggle room, that's painful. That's painful. And I don't want you to be in that situation. So I'm not saying freak out. I'm not saying dump all your retirement plans down the drain. I'm not saying that I'm just saying, Hey, have some margin. So kind of going back to social security and the full retirement age, they could raise it. It could go to 68, 60, 69, said, who knows? Because the bottom line is this, over the last, let's say 60 years, people's life expectancy has gone up by a number of years. And if you made it to age 65, then the odds of you living another, another handful of decades is pretty 
high. And so, and they know that. And so they say, okay, we can adjust this full retirement age so that what that normally means for Social Security, we'll see how it actually plays out when, when one of these laws actually gets passed. But most of the time, what that means is you have to be older to get the full amount that you normally would get at 66, 67. So if you took it, let's say at 62, it'd be even smaller than your today, what they project your age 62 benefits to be because you are that much farther away from your full retirement age if, of course, they raise the age. So that's certainly something to keep in mind that these changes could happen. And because the pitfall or the the amount that they, when they project they won't be able to do 100% benefits is not that far away. It's mid 2030s, right on there. It does fluctuate some, but mid 2030s, it's not that far away. For you as a federal employee thinking about retirement, again, you got to have some margin. You got to remember, okay, I plan the best I possibly can with some rigor room. Be conservative with your estimates, right? Don't assume that the market's going to be incredible. Don't assume that tax rates are going to stay the same. You got to make assumptions in the planning that have enough wiggle room so that you're going to be okay even when these adjustments happen because they probably will. And if they don't, great, you have more money. But if they do, hey, you're prepared and you are squared away in your planning. So if there's anything like this where maybe you didn't expect it, maybe you're already retired, there's anything that happened that you didn't quite expect, I'd love for you to share in the comments below on the YouTube channel so we can all learn improve and get better together. So again, if you're new here, my name is Dallin Hawes, financial planner serving you guys as federal employees and consider subscribing if you are serious about your planning for your future, getting the most out of your benefits, investing and in maximizing your TSP and all that other good stuff we talk about here. I'll see you guys next time.